Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day five of the Leak Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's poem, number 300, longest increasing subsequence. Given an integer array norms, we turn the length of the longest strictly increasing subsequence. Okay. So, I mean, uh, this poem, I always kind of not a fan of to be honest i feel like it's just a very awkward problem uh because it at a certain point it is like a memorization thing it's a very one-off very specific um greedy solution that is kind of really tricky to explain and understand and took me a long time to really actually understand this when i was starting out Uh, i think the um yeah, I mean, I think the the uh, the n square solution is a dynamic programming solution, and it is the longest path in a DAG solution, and that is more interesting to me just because it applies to more uh, more things. It, it is a basis for a lot of just dynamic programming, you know, a lot of carryover to a lot of dynamic programming problems in general. But this in itself is um, a little bit of an aside. Um, and it just makes it a kind of like, I don't know, every time I see it, I know how to do it, but I don't feel like this is something that you can come up with on your own. Not really anyway. Um, now about like maybe a lot of hints. It took me a long time because I, I think when I was starting out, uh, maybe not starting out, but like maybe a year into like competitive, um, this is not a well-known solution. Google wasn't that good back then when I was young, which maybe gives you a, a sort of a... a, a you know, aging myself a little bit. But uh, but as a result, um, it took me a long time to get. And also, to be honest, th- at that time, uh, competition didn't really require the N-log N solution, which is kind of funny because now it's just taken for granted. It is a medium problem. And they're like, oh, yeah, just do the N-log N. And then everyone, like, kind of just memorized it and kind of remember it. Um, I mean, I can explain to you what the basis and, and explanation, but and I do understand it now, just to be clear. But it's like, it's a very specific thing. And if I, I don't know, like if I kind of disappeared for five years and come back, can I prove this from scratch? Probably only because I know it enough and probably still have an impression. But if I were able to, if I start again today, can I come this, come up this on scratch, uh, by scratch? I don't know. Uh, like, with, because it just doesn't really tie into anything else you learn really. Um, I may be overstating a little bit, and of course there are some people that am able to or that are able to do it. Uh, but I feel like, you know, like if you're a beginner and you haven't seen it yet, uh, or you, even if you're like a intermediate and you haven't seen it yet, uh, uh, it's a ridiculous problem to come up the solution with a solution with. Um, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, that is quite a bit of a rant, but uh, but yeah. But that's how I really feel about this problem, to be honest. Uh, yeah, tell us how you really feel. But yeah, but the idea is just to go one thing at a time. And the idea here is to... Because I feel like this this solution is like a zero to one in a way that there's no intermediate like learning things, right? Um, you just have to kind of go for it. And the only way you go for it is if you know how to do it already. Um, I don't know. If you feel like I'm wrong about this, let me know in the comments. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I feel super strongly about it, but um, yeah, I don't know that I feel super strongly about it. But that is kind of truth. Uh, all right. So the idea here is. Is basically building a base of of the longest increasing subsequence, strictly in this case of length zero. I, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm gonna write this in a very weird, awkward way. If you already know the answer, you're not, you're, you're definitely not gonna write it this way. But that's the way that I I'm trying to explain it, maybe in a little bit different way, a little bit, uh, you know, um, just a little bit different. So let me know if, you know, uh, so let's just say you have, uh, do, 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 maybe negative, inf- no, 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 infinity times 
uh, n, right? Or maybe even n plus 1. And the idea here, uh, and s is a terrible real name, I understand, but s sub i is you go to the longest increasing subsequence of length i um, uh, where the last um, last number last number is uh, is s of i right So then now you, you can think about it this way, and then now let's say we have four x and nums, then now you go, okay, well, let's go through it, right? So uh, if s sub, well, you know, maybe we just start with zero, right? So, so now um, s sub zero is actually pretty weird. Actually, I don't remember the basis for zero. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is a good one. I don't know. But yeah, if uh, and then basically the idea is that, okay, well, let's see. Let's see, is there a range, or oh, sorry, uh, a longest subsequence of length i in this case, right? So if, if s sub i is less than x, the current number, what does that mean? That means that we can now extend the series to to i plus 1, right? So then now s of i plus 1 is equal to min of s i plus 1 x. And why do we do this? Um, the way that we, the reason why we do this is so that, um, you know, well, this is so that, you know, if x is greater than s of i, then now we can make a sequence of s of i plus 1. And then now, in a greedy kind of way, we want to say, okay, well, you know, the longest increasing subsequence of make, we can choose. So now there are two sequences, one of where the last count of length i plus one, one with the last character of s sub i plus one, and the other is x. And of course, we choose a smaller one because, because then now the next, um, because the next number coming in, in a greedy kind of way, the smaller number will allow more possibilities. So that's basically the idea, right? And then now, uh, your answer will be something like, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, answer is you go to, uh, maybe even something like i in range from n uh, counting down. If s sub i is equal to, uh, or is not equal to infinity, then we can return i. Or maybe i plus one for the length. No, no, it should be i, right? And then maybe a third force to make sure that it. it well, I mean, this would be true for zero, so it should be okay, right? And oh, I forgot to declare infinity. Sorry. Uh, did I mess this up? Why did I return zero? <laughs> did I just return zero for everything? Um. Hmm. Oh, I, why did I start at one? Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. So this will be right um, because I mean the intuition is very sensible, right? The longest increasing, then we just kind of keep updating, um, right? And that's very Gucci. Yeah. But then now um, I think. Okay, so this solution makes sense, understandable, hopefully for everybody. Um, right, and what's the analysis of this? Well, this loop on line 11 is going to be O of n, O of n iterations. And obviously on line 12, this is also going to be O of n loop. And this is going to be an n square loop, right? Or n square double loops. And so this is n square, and you have the n square solution. This is not the longest path in the DAG solution that I was talking about, though, you know. This is just one way of kind of constructing the solution, right? And and then now the idea is, okay, wh when we analyze this, what does it mean, right? Well, or rather, how often does this update? Um, 
Um, so there are really only a couple of cases, right? So let's go over them. I think maybe I don't always go to exhaustive case analysis, but I think case analysis at least like it's a it's a reasonable proof, right? So let's say you have s of i for some i is less than x, right? And uh, okay, well let's go to the base case first. Let's say this is the case. Well, what does this happen? Well, nothing happens because you know it has to be strictly and increasing, so nothing happens, right? And then now you you branch it out. And then now, um, and another way to write this, and maybe I'll write it out for now, if it is greater than x, then s of i plus 1 is equal to x. Maybe that's a little bit more clear, right? Um, because we want to update this such that it is stricter. So then now there's only two cases, right? So this i plus 1 is greater than x. And then s sub i plus 1 is, I don't know, I guess if it's equal to x, it doesn't really matter. So maybe there's another case if you want to write it that way. But yeah, so if this is greater than, what happens, right? Well, we we, we update s sub i plus 1. Uh, in this case, we do not update, right? No updates. This x doesn't do anything, right? So nothing happens, right? Because... Here, like basically the state of the things never change. And also, what does that mean, right? Well, if this means, if, well, nothing happens for now, but we can kind of keep extending, right? So nothing happens for I, but then we kind of keep going forward, right? Uh, we'll keep, keep on this theme for now. Right, and of course, when you go to the next number, and this is true, then nothing happens. So the only thing that happens is when this is the case, right? Well, what does this actually mean? I think this is the kind of the critical point. Well, when you update s of i plus one, then s of i plus one in the future, when you kind of do another loop, then nothing happens, right? So that means that if you kind of analyze this in a very uh, specific way then that means that it only updates here, but once you update this, that means that the next number and the, all the numbers bef after that is going to be nothing happens because, well, the next number is literally x because you update this to x. So so next iteration, s sub i plus 1 is going to be equal to x, and so nothing happens, and then nothing happens propagating forward because just by definition, um, right, and if you kind of play this out, then the two things that you can observe. One is that um, one is that S sub i, S sub i is monotonically uh, actually. Mm, no, it's strictly increasing, right? Because you only update the next number if x is bigger than the previous number. So that means that you cannot squeeze in a smaller number because, well, it just doesn't get updated. So as a result, it gets strictly increasing, right? So you have two observations. F sub i is strictly increasing, right? And then the other thing is that we only update one element, right? And that one element is this element because after everything after that, it's either um, going to be equal to x. Is it strictly increasing? Hmm. I guess it doesn't have to be strictly increasing, actually. Um, I think it's monotonically increasing uh, because it can come back later. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's monotonically increasing, right? And we can only update one element because once you up that element, the next number is going to be the same or and they're all going to be the same or higher, so you never update it again, right? So because of these two, then now you can, uh, and this took me a while to understand when I was younger. Because of this, the monotonically increasing part, obviously binary search to that part, I, you know, actually is pretty straightforward. But the updating of only one element part is the part that I, it took me a while to understand why we didn't need a for loop. And I don't know if this, this is a good way to show you the understanding, but it is a way to kind of do a proof I know it's still a little bit hand wavy in parts, but but if you kind of iterate it out and then use induction, you can kind of see that this is true. We only update one element. So that means that we just have to find the one element. 
And what what is that one element that we're trying to find? Well, the, the element in such that x is so we're trying to find the element such that s sub i is greater than x and s sub i plus one is um i guess i guess it could be greater than or equal to x right and of course then now you can also just you know if you think about it this way then now you're trying to find the first element where this is true because just by definition because it's strictly increasing you know but if you find this then you, you're going to find you know it's the same price and of course this is just a binary search and that's basically really the answer for this one uh, and then you can rewrite it as s sub um uh, uh oh bisect that bisect left uh s x and then this is the index that you get and this is the index that uh you know same idea as before we updated if it is smaller um, and of course it just means that it doesn't update if it's not right and it, it only doesn't if it's the same so I think that's what I wanted to say yeah and that's pretty much it oh sh I, I, I didn't realize there'll be negative numbers so okay fine <laughs> I didn't realize there'd be negative numbers. So I had to change some uh, constants, namely this one, I guess. Oops. Uh, did all this and then I just forgot. I didn't. Uh, I actually forgot. And I actually, when I saw it, I was like, oh, remember the negative numbers. But then I think I just went over all this thing I forgot. Uh, but uh, but yeah. But that's basically the idea. That's basically the entire thing. And of course. Um, there are minor things that you can write to improve it because, for example, here you could just binary search for the infinity if you like or something like that. But you can also just keep track of it as you update or something like that as well. Uh, and there are some minor things. And if you kind of clean it up, it'll look something like this. And that's pretty much it. Uh, and that time I got it right to negative infinity. I knew <clears throat> Oh, well, silly mistakes, Larry. Uh, but yeah. And obviously, this loop is still O of N. This is uh, log n, so this is going to be n log n. And that's pretty much all I have for this one. <sighs> yeah, let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.